Namaste everyone. My name is Kumar Sambha. We are going to have the ninth international conference on human values in higher education this year from November 22nd to 24th, in which we'll have the keynote lectures, we'll have panel discussions. The theme of the conference is value-based education for humane society, addressing the sustainable development goals. And we are going to have three parallel panel discussions in special interest groups. So one special interest group is holistic value-based education. And we are going to have discussion on the need for such an education on the first day, then the vision, and then finally the implementation. So presently, I am going to share the UHP point of view regarding the holistic value-based education. If you look at the efforts made in the country for the past so many years, we have been able to see the need for value-based education. If you read the constitution, right, we can see that it clearly envisions a society which is based on justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. There have been several committees formed over the years which have talked about making education value-based because unless we have values at the core and we try to keep only skills at the focus, the education is not going to serve the needs of society. We are not going to have a just and equitable society as envisioned in NEP 2020 also. If you read the vision document of UGC, AICT, all such documents do emphasize on the need for promoting human values through education. If you look at the sustainable development goals made by UNO, there also we are talking about quality education. We are talking about justice in society. We are talking about a sustainable development. And this is not possible unless we start working at the core in education. Reading the National Education Policy 2020, we can see that it is imperative to appreciate the different approaches and achievements which have been made so far and how we can be complementary to fill the gaps. So the NEP 2020 was another step towards filling this gap. And we are trying to take the message further by implementing value education across various institutions in the country. And thankful to AICT, which took up this program for all the colleges under AICT in 2017. And we have been implementing value education through various measures, like the student induction program, the mandatory course in the second year, the elective courses, the minor degree, and through various programs for leadership development, management development. So we'll talk about it as we go along. Now, when you look at education, we can see that there is a clear priority of values over skills in education. Education has the responsibility to facilitate two things. One is what to do, and the other is how to do. Understanding what to do, that is what is valuable as a human being, is one important aspect, and that is called as value education. Learning how to do comes later, where we acquire the skills, we develop the technologies, we conduct research, and we try to add more and more skills to support what we find valuable in our living. So both are important, but we can clearly see that value education holds a higher priority over skill or technical education. And that's why uh, we are able to see that unless the education is made valuest, we are not going to solve the problems in society. Now, if you look at the present approach, the present approach is largely biased towards skill education. And when we try to understand a human being, we can see that human being is coexistence of self and body. Human being is not merely the body. Now, through skill education, generally we try to work upon physical facilities, on material things. And that's why you can see that the right understanding is not in focus. The capacity to live in relationship with other human beings is also not in focus. And the core focus is to develop new technologies and through that make more and more production and then accumulate as much as possible, to consume as much as possible. And we're not able to even make out what would be the right way to produce so that our production process are sustainable. We are not able to make out our need for physical facilities so that we can get to see the limit of need for physical facility. And that's why we are also not able to utilize the facilities that we have already produced rightly. And that's why there is so much of pollution, resource depletion, and so many global menaces. But when we have a solution-centric approach, then we start working for value-based skill education. So we'll of course work for skills, we'll conduct research, we'll develop new products, new technology, but at the core would be right understanding. We are able to very much see that what is conducive to human health and happiness, what is conducive to human prosperity. 
so when we go for value based skill education then we try to ensure right understanding in every child the capacity to live in relationship with other human beings and also the capacity to identify the need for physical facilities and then we try to acquire the skills and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required doing the right utilization of whatever we have produced so far so that we can ensure prosperity mutually so on one hand when we are able to fulfill the need for physical facilities rightly we feel prosperous within that yes i have more than what i require as a human being for my family for my extended family for my society on the other hand i am also able to take care of the nature around i am able to take care of the bird animal soil air water all these entities in the nature we are very much related to them if you exploit them if you destroy them if you exploit the forests the rivers the air the water the soil ultimately we are going to suffer so when we have a solution centric approach our whole production methods get transformed it is not merely meant at producing more and more consuming more and more indulging more and more no we try to look at prosperity on either side on one hand i am fulfilling my need and on the other hand i am also able to see that the nature is getting enriched day by day isn't it so three important aspects should be there to ensure right understanding in every child to develop the capacity to and sure fulfilling relationship with the other human being and also to develop the capacity to acquire the physical facilities which we have been able to make out rightly through right understanding and then to fulfill it in such a way that the nature is enriched in the process and we also feel prosperous so we can clearly see that there is a need for such a solution centric approach which we many times find missing in the current system if you try to look at the syllabus right from primary to higher education seldom we are talking about relationship seldom we are talking about right understanding and most of the time we are talking about physiochemical things i hope you are able to see this now once we are able to see the need for value based education then we can also try to make out basic guidelines okay so we need to be clear how we can decide whether something is valuable or not if something is given to education how can we say that this is valuable and can the values be universal this is something to be investigated is something to be explored so one basic guideline for value education would be that the content has to be universal and that essentially means that it has to be applicable to every human being irrespective of caste creed gender sex religion whatever nationality so the content has to be universal applicable to all human beings for all times at all places secondly it has to be rational it has to be amenable to logical reasoning it cannot be a set of do's and don'ts should and shouldn't thirdly it has to be verifiable and that means that the student is able to verify whatever is being said in the form of proposal on one's own right now when i go to verify something that is being said to me i try to refer to my natural acceptance what is acceptable to me within do i accept it naturally or not and secondly i also try to live accordingly i try to validate in my experience in my interaction with the human being my interaction with the rest of nature now if it is acceptable to me within and also valid in my living then it becomes a part of my understanding so it is very much necessary that whatever is taught in terms of human values goes as a proposal and the student is authorized empowered you know, to verify and validate it and finally it has to be leading to harmony so essentially we all aspire for happiness and that also in continuity and with little exploration we can see that happiness is nothing but to be in harmony when i am in harmony within when i am in harmony in my relationships when i am in harmony in my participation in society and nature i feel happy within so whatever is taught through human values has to lead to harmony and that is something that we are able to see also very much the more we try to explore this we are able to ensure harmony within we are able to ensure happiness and harmony in the family so values that enable us to live in peace and harmony within our own selves as well as with others can only be a part of the content for human values so this is all that i wanted to share in terms of need for value based education so we talked about the efforts made so far we talked about the priority of values over skills we could also see how the solution centric approach is required in education and we also had a glimpse of the basic guidelines when we go for implementing any course in human values so i welcome you to join our panel and be a part of the discussion
थैंक यू